Brent here with Bring Your Own Tools, and on today's episode, if you want to learn how this putty-looking product fixes holes and roof lines and your siding and so many other uses along the way, well, keep on watching. Let's get started. Now, of course, there's always good and bad things about being a homeowner, and today is really about just fixing some miscellaneous problems that I've had over the past decade that I haven't actually fixed. This one was more of a rot situation that I stopped it from rotting, but as you can see, I obviously have not filled the hole, and this really came into play recently because I just installed my amazing permanent Christmas light fixtures, and trust me, I have had plenty of comments informing me that I have a hole in my fascia, so I'm just gonna take care of that right now. Now the first step in this entire process is actually physically removing all the damaged wood. Now this is all the damaged wood that is not physically structural and any loose debris is preferable to remove at this point. I then take my drill bit and drill a few holes into the stable wood of the fascia and then we are going to be injecting epoxy resin into those locations prior to filling because we want to strengthen it first. Now, as you can imagine, having a hole like this for over a decade, it tends to collect a plethora of items inside of it. So always making sure you have a clean surface and a clean workspace is key, especially before applying the epoxy or the liquid wood. I grab my shop vac and try and suck up any loose particles that I can possibly grab. Just make sure you're careful, especially if you're working on a tall ladder like I am at this point. The last thing you want to do is compromise yourself because you're trying to fill a hole in your roof line. Not fun. I then grab my sander and grind off any of the surrounding surface that is loose because I want a nice clean, even surface to work off of as much as possible so the liquid wood can bind properly to a clean work surface. And once my sanding is complete, I do one more quick sweep with my vacuum and it's now time for product. Now we are using this wood restoration kit by Abitron. This is a liquid wood and wood epoxy mixture kit. And it is an incredible little kit that I've actually used on past projects. You get two quarts of liquid wood, an A and a B component. You also get two quarts of your wood epoxy A and B. You then have a nice little putty knife as well as a couple gloves and of course a cup for liquid quantity mixing, a little squirt bottle, a little stir stick, and of course your trusty directions. Now the first step when using this kit is of course the liquid wood and we are going to be pouring one part B and one part A together. That's a nice part about this little mixture is that it's a one to one versus a two to one. Just makes mixing it up just a little bit easier. Depending on the size of the project you might need more but in this case this was plenty for my application. And just like any good two-part mixing kit, I always put a preface on mixing thoroughly. Yes, I mix this for approximately two to three minutes just to ensure that I had good overall mixture because if you don't mix it appropriately, then it might not strengthen the wood as the directions suggest. Once you have a mix, go ahead and fill up your squeeze bottle and let's start applying. Now, prior to applying this product, there's gonna be a few things you wanna think about. One, of course, you wanna make sure the wood is fully dried prior to applying. Two, you wanna make sure you're mindful of the actual weather and the fact that it's not too cold to apply the product. And three, you wanna make sure it's not gonna rain on you that day or potentially in the very near future. So just keep that in mind prior to applying. I use a squeeze bottle to inject the liquid wood into the holes that I drilled prior and then pour it on all the surfaces that I can reach. After I do that, I then use my nice little brush that I can really just throw away afterwards and apply the product to all surfaces to ensure that I have even coverage over the entire space. Now after applying, I let the product sit for a bit, and in all honesty, because it was a colder day, I did use a heat gun just to accelerate the curing process. I wanna make sure it's cured and dry as much as possible prior to applying the wood epoxy. Now if there's any individuals out there that used to love playing with 
Play-Doh, then this is the product for you. Yes, Wood Epoxy is a two-part product that the product itself, in all honesty, is very light, but you take an even handful of both products and basically just smush them together. Now, the nice thing about this is that they don't have to be perfect amounts. You don't have to literally weigh each product individually to make sure that you have the proper amount of both products. As long as it's generally close and mixed thoroughly together, that's the most important part. Now the nice part about mixing these two together is that they're two separate colors. Therefore, you know exactly when it's mixed thoroughly because it's the same overall color once it's mixed thoroughly. You have a nice even color versus a little bit lighter, a little bit darker. Once you do, you are ready to start filling your hole. Well, in my case, I have quite a large hole, so I might need to add just a little bit more than some people's holes. Just think about that prior to making up too much or too little. Also, doesn't this look like a snowman? Hmm, that gives me an idea. More on that later. But just know that you're not gonna try and just jam all this in there at once. You're gonna be working in small sections, mainly due to the fact that I feel like you're able to ensure that there's not gonna be any air gaps when filling a hole. If you put too much in, you potentially might not have good connection between the existing wood and your product. Therefore, working with small batches and making sure they're getting into every little tight space that you see there is key. In all honesty, it is rather satisfying filling this entire hole with what seems to be Play-Doh. And the fact that this product in 24 hours should be fully hardened, ready to sand, drill into, what have you, is pretty incredible. So it's an amazing product that I've used multiple times. And the fact that I'm able to fill a hole of this size and will fully strengthen the fascia board without removing the entire board itself is pretty incredible and will save you time and money in the long run. Now if the hole is fully filled, you can take their putting knife that they use with the kit and press it down. I, however, because the hole is so large, I grab an eight inch putty knife and really smooth out the entire surface. The one trick with this is the fact that in order for the product to not stick to the knife, I actually take a bit of WD-40, apply it to the knife first, and then smoothly spread out the wood epoxy. That way I can have a nice even coat over the entire surface, as well as allow me to reduce my sanding that I'll need in future steps. Now as we wait for this hole to dry, let's go ahead and go to another hole that we have on this house. Now this hole was created by woodpeckers, and if you're a homeowner, I know you're supposed to love all living things, which I do love you, Kona, but I do not love woodpeckers, no. If you've had issues with woodpeckers, you know how damaged they can be, and as you can see, they've really done a number on this house, especially in a couple locations, with this being only one of them. But the nice thing about Abitron is that that this product can help me with these holes as well. Now I did all the steps that I did on the previous hole, but with the main factor of that, we have to have some type of backing behind this because it's so deep. So I actually apply shims and install it using just good old hot glue. Now hot glue is perfect just due to the fact that I just need a quick, easy bond here to make sure that I have something to press against and using some wood shims and adhering them to the back of the siding with some hot glue is a perfect little combination for a backer piece. Now I did want to fill this hole with some insulation prior to applying the wood epoxy. There's a few different types of insulation, especially with the gappage, and this is for large gaps. Just make sure you don't spray in too much because this stuff does become very strong and can bow out your siding if you put in too much. Just think before you spray. And after the spray foam insulation is fully cured and dry, you then can take a generic flat razor knife, scrape off all the excess. You then can apply your liquid wood along with your wood epoxy. Fill the entire surface and utilize your eight inch putty knife, especially if you have this type of siding because you can make nice, even crisp lines all the way down with a eight inch putty knife because you can just apply the wood epoxy up to the knife and you can rest a knife against the crease of your siding. That will give you a nice, crisp, even line all the way down. Now the beauty about this product is that once it's dried, it's hard as a rock, or at least I'd say as hard as wood, and you're able to sand it just the way you would do normal wood. 
Now I'm taking 80 grit and then going up to 120 just because I want a nice clean even surface all the way across. Now the only issue that I've come across in this entire area is the fact that this product is perfect when you're applying it to a smooth surface. So it's, if it's a piece of exterior trim that you're trying to match to, it can match perfectly. But the fact that this is a wood product and you have the grain and the variants of wood, it doesn't match exactly because it has a smooth surface versus a wood surface. Now I'm sure I can figure out a few different ways to combat that in future videos, but just note that that might be something that you have to acknowledge at a certain point. After I'm done with the sander, I do take a small soft sanding block and sand the corner just to verify that I have a nice crisp edge over the roof line. Now I do actually apply a bit of pressure and make a few small wood variances on the surface just to enable me to match the overall texture of the wood adjacent to it. Now at this point your surface is fully ready for paint. I su always suggest applying a primer layer first and then the exterior paint, but with a white you can generally get away with just a good high quality exterior white. Now as for a color like my blue, I always strongly suggest applying a primer coat first because if you try and apply your paint color directly to the surface, it might look different than if you had primered the surface first. Just keep that in mind and note to self. And just like any products that I stand behind on this channel, I will leave a link in the description box below on where to actually purchase this product. It is a great product and truly a truly product that has countless uses, which I can always appreciate. Oh yeah, and I wasn't kidding when this stuff is basically just really hard play-doh because I was able to make a perfect little snowman and it is very close to Christmas at least when I'm making this video so I felt like it's the good festive spirit look at that guy perfect and look at that beautiful sexy beast man that is one amazing before and after oh yeah and there you have it, episode number 58, fully completed in quite the amazing transformation uh, with just one product kit, which is why I want to say a big special thank you to Abitron. They were the ones that sponsored this video and I personally actually reached out to them because I had used them in the past and I wanted to feature them on the channel. So I want to say a big special thank you to them and please check them out. Also, please like this video, please subscribe to this channel, and please check out my Instagram page and my newly developed website at biotools.me. You can learn how to support the channel from there. In any case, for time, and catch you next time. Now, if you were ever questioning the strength of this stuff, get a little of this. I let my snowman dry overnight, and it mechanically bonded to the cutting board. Strong stuff.